Welcome to Strictly Game Boy, the podcast with, on average, 20 hours of battery life. I'm your host, Brian, and I am joined by my co-host, Clay. Hello. Hi, Clay. Greetings. How have you been? I have been good. You I, have been good? I have been good okay. at times okay. in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, and I am uh, stoked to be here at our first official real episode. Are you excited? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, that's good. You have a reason to be excited. And I, I you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it early. We have a great episode for today. I think we do. I agree. We are taking a look back at uh, the Game & Watch Gallery number one. So uh, well, let's get to it. All right, Clay. So uh, you suggested Game & Watch Gallery. So uh, what's the deal? What's the deal? Yes, so I was trying to think of a first good game uh, to start off with, maybe something that people would be familiar with, but maybe not uh, the biggest, you know, hit in in the library. I mean, um, if, if you want a classic Nintendo experience, though, like, it does not get more classic than Game & Watch. That's true, and uh, I figured something kind of more closer to first party uh, would be good, especially with, with what you chose. So I was trying to think of something to kind of offset that just to have a well-rounded episode. So I picked this one. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my experience with it here in a little bit, but yeah. So for those of you who don't know, um, th there is a game for the game boy, uh, the original game boy called um, the game and watch gallery. And then there was subsequent sequels uh, two more of them were on the Game Boy Color, and so we'll eventually probably talk about those down the road. Yeah, I, I, I would like that. I would think so. I mean, they're I'm all big good. Big Game & Watch fan, so. I'm pretty sure I own all three of them. I'm not sure if I have the GBA one. On the, the Game Boy Color, or the Game Boy versions. They are Game Boy Color games, though, technically, right? All but the first one. All but the first one? Okay. Yes. So, um, a little bit of information about this game, for those of you who don't know. Uh, it was developed by, I hope I'm saying this right, Tose. Tose? Tose so, Software. So, so the, the, the games themselves, and most likely because these include the kind of monochromatic versions, type A and type B, easy and hard mode. Right. But then they also have like a modern... Uh, version that you can play which comes with like mario characters and like baby yoshis and donkey kongs and donkey kong juniors donkey kong juniors sorry and uh you know toze would have been behind the work of putting those segments together i assume but it's it's basically these are just old nintendo like calculator games right right i'm pretty familiar with the uh the old game and watch games i never owned any did you I did not own one. Uh, my aunt had Clamshell uh, Donkey Kong Jr., I believe. Nice. Which is an interesting game in and of itself. Definitely. Um, so, Toze, they created all of the Game & Watch Gallery games, okay. as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, They're good for, like, cheap, quick work. They they made they kind of have, like, the legacy that Rare had, where they just made a ton of crap for the NES. Right. Although Rare's games were generally better. Like, I'm not saying everything. You know, you've got the, the like... Uh, some Who other... Framed Roger Rabbit and Sesame Street 1, 2, 3. Oh, I was going to even go even worse and say, like, what, what isn't there that Ouija board game or Yeah, or Taboo. Something? Taboo, yeah. Taboo, mm -hmm. the Sixth Sense. So, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, Rare was spitting out games, but many of them were quality. Uh, Toze is spitting out games. Some of them are quality. So Yeah, I'm not sure what their absolute latest game was, but I did notice that they did the latest uh, Paper Mario Color Splash for the mm -hmm. Wii U. Okay. Which is a pretty big release. Yeah. I mean, that was the last big, you know, first party. -ish. I, are they considered first party? I don't know. I don't think. They did a Mario so, game. I don't. Though. I don't. I don't know. So. Actually, I, I guess I don't know if Tose is. I'm sure that they put stuff out on like, uh, um, Sega and stuff back in the day. Right. Um, but I mean, I so maybe not the time. I can look at. Maybe they are now. Um, I was trying to think. No, they've of... got they've got some PS. Uh, like a few. They've got a smattering of PlayStation games. Okay. They so did, they did Lightning Returns. I don't know what that is. That's fine. It's uh the third final like Final Fantasy thirteen three. But they co-developed it with Square and Square Enix and Triace. But yeah, they've they've done some work for. They seem to be just work for hire for some of the more Japanese companies. Okay. Not some of the less Japanese companies, whatever that means. Fair enough. 
um, so they developed this game. It released back in May of 1997 in the United States. I didn't bother to uh, write down the other release dates for the other areas of the world, which is very insensitive of me. Mm-hmm. But, but it's also very American of you. Right. I mean, I'm just trying to be patriotic. And you're I guess. you're nothing if not American. So right. I'm nothing. <laughs> Even though I think I'd make a good UK person, but mm. uh, I'd make a good Irish person. Yeah. So we'd Especially still be at odds in the bar. Ha ha. Ha Um. Where was I? 1997. Brian, what was happening in 1997? I'm really drawing this whole thing out. We should already be uh, on the next no, point. No but... Doubt was exploding. No, I don't mean um, that. I mean, yeah. like, in the Nintendo world. Like, Star what... Fox had come out. Uh, GoldenEye had come out. Uh, the, the, the N64 was in its, like, first real year. So you got, yeah. like, Shadows of the Empire and you got yeah. um, Pilot Wings. Mario. Pilot Wings would have been 96, though. The, well, I mean, it's it first, was out it's, in 97. Right, right. I was busy playing the crap out of Mario 64 trying to get all 120 stars So you were time. probably playing Pilot Wings in 97. I was not playing Pilot Wings. Well, in people were people were <laughs> they're like, "All right, I'm finally done with Mario. I can finally figure out what this flight simulator game right, is." Right, right. We're um, getting way off topic here. Either way, uh, 97 but, exciting time to be a Nintendo fan. Well, so I need as we do this show, I need to learn what years what Game Boy things were happening, but I would have to assume this is probably the later Game Boy is Game at this Boy? point like dying. Um it was it had been out for uh by the end of ninety seven, eight years. Um people were wondering like how much longer Nintendo was gonna stick with this thing. Um I, I feel like it was starting to trail off and then ninety eight hit and Pokemon came and everything changed. And it it got it got a few more years of life out of that. Well, it looks like November 98 was when the Game Boy Color came to the United States. Okay, right. So we were kind of, this was at the tail end mm-hmm. of the original Game Boy and its life. But but things were still coming out from 98 to 2000 that could feasibly play on the Game Boy, the original. So, okay. like, it, it was, people were probably starting to talk about, because everyone always mentions how Pokemon just saved the Game Boy and sold many more uh so yeah people were probably at this point starting to talk about is it it, what is nintendo really doing it's been eight years like yes it's it's been a strong system but what are they doing now okay this is interesting this is all good stuff for me to learn because i'm still trying to figure out when things transitioned out Mm -hmm. if there was stragglers on the original game boy that kind of were in the middle there Mm -hmm. and we talked a little bit about that but anyway okay so we should move on because this is (laughs) going really long um this is not a port of a console game we we kind of want to talk about whether or not because game boy did get a lot of ports of you know super nintendo n64 games so um more so super nintendo and nes uh not n64 but right um so yeah this was original this never came out on a home console this was the only way you could play these so that makes it unique that's nice we're not limiting ourselves on the show to only original only on game boy games but this one is one of those uh as far as trivia or behind the scenes there's only one little thing that i could find uh that was interesting enough to talk about and basically if you play this game on a super game boy which was on the uh, Super Nintendo. Um, a controller uh, for the Super Nintendo, which would show up in your game when you were picking uh, which mini game to play instead of seeing a Game Boy. Yeah, because at the beginning you can you can pick, hey, I want to play classic, or I want to play the updated version, and then easier hard mode. And, and would, at the bottom it shows you everything you need to know. Right. The like, buttons. Oh, this button does this, button does, which I appreciate because it would be kind of confusing otherwise Mm because some things they had to take some liberties on to make sense but so yeah it's not that interesting but Uh, and fun little fact um so game and watch and game boy are like of course like intricately linked to get not intricately but they're they're linked to one another because they are nintendo's like portable systems of the 80s um, both created by Gunpei Yokoi, or, you know, that birthed as an idea uh, in the form of Game & Watch. Uh, I don't know if it's apocryphal, but uh, the story goes, I, I feel like I have read a quote from him. No, I, 
I haven't read a quote from him because he died before that book was written. But That's I feel sad. like there is a quote from him. Yeah, no, it, it, it rest in peace, Gunpei Yokoi. But uh, uh, I, I feel like there is a quote from him somewhere, but I'm not sure if it exists. But he said he got the idea uh, for Game and Watch by like in the late seventies, just watching a uh, bored businessman uh, play with a calculator because he had nothing else to do on the train <laughs> to work, and he just like, huh, uh, you know, and like people like Satori Iwata like program their first games on a calculator and so naturally that got an engineering minded person to be like I-, I think i could probably make something that's simple enough that to keep people busy in their downtime so that's supposedly where he got the idea from and it it birthed into this line of single uh game handheld things that tiger would eventually run off with and yeah make a bunch of really crappy uh Star Wars games based on I liked the Star Wars games. I mean, yeah, you know, but, but you're at right, that point crappy. we had we had moved on as a as a culture. Yeah. You know. I, I like I said, I played the crap out of that clamshell Donkey Kong Jr. game and watch. Um and it's game and watch because there's a game and a watch. You get a timer. You, you can That's right. Tell what time it is on those things. I actually have a bunch of those tiger games downstairs. Really? I got some Star Wars ones. I have a uh uh, Power Rangers and like a like a spooky like a Universal <laughs> Monsters with like Frankenstein. And really, Mommy. dude, they're cool. That's, that's wild. I didn't even like that 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 would be a license that they could cash oh, in man, on. Dude. I love those games. Everybody, there were like there was a new Tiger commercial like every month on Nickelodeon back in the day. My parents tried to throw those away, and I was like, "Give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw those away. I'll probably never play them, but I will keep them." Yeah. So, uh, you know, and then you have your your dad running in the room with uh that like led light uh football game from the late 70s yes. you know like well, this is what we played i could never figure that out either uh, i i they they remade those at one point my dad yeah. was just like just excitedly bought it and then <laughs> i ended up being the one who spent the most time with it <laughs> got really good at it i'd be interested to try that again yeah i haven't played it they in a still while. make them yeah you I've can still them. get one I've seen those so don't That's even have to go to craigslist for it to grab it yeah um wow yeah kind of circling back to your thought it's just such a th- sad thing to think about a businessman sitting on a train <laughs> so bored and like just typing boobless over and yeah, over again it's just like <laughs> oh it makes me so sad like just to think about that like that's such a sad image but, yeah but just, then like just a company man just just bored drained. and just, it has nothing better to do with his life i feel like that should be in one of their commercials read a damn book like come on right <laughs> jeez all right, uh, we should keep moving. So uh, another thing we want to talk about is any history we have with this game. I'll go real quick because I don't have a lot of history with it. And uh, basically, I don't know, two or three years ago, um, I started picking them up. And I mean them, I mean all of the galleries. I think I got the f- two and three first. I noticed they're a little bit easier to find. And it took me a while longer to finally come across one in the wild. But eventually I did pick it up. And so I don't have the advanced one. Um, I think I had played two and three when I bought them. One, I don't think I ever put in and played. So I didn't really play it until leading up to this episode. But then once I turned it on, I'm like, hey, I recognize a lot of these. And I don't think I ever played the Game & Watch versions. But I remember on an old, old, old computer I had... They had a game that was basically Fire, um, which we'll talk about later. Anyway, it was on the computer, and it was com- it like would look different, and it sounded different, but I just remember playing it as a kid on the computer, and I thought it was super cool. And so that's, to this day, my favorite, just because I played it as a kid. So, fire, fire is fun. Fire is, uh, it's yeah. so simple, and I like that. It's not super like overly complex. That's the great thing about these games is that just how simple they are, but yeah. just good. Right, and and addicting, and yeah. um, So yeah, not a whole lot of history with them, but I do own the first three, and uh, I think they're cool to collect and and have, and there's some really neat things about them. So what about you? So uh, you said you don't have four. Correct. Four is the GBA one. I played a lot of four, and I'm pretty sure on four it comes with fire. And I think Octopus... Yeah, um, it almost seems like four is a remake of one, mm-hmm. which is weird. Yeah, I I think so, but it has more games on it. Uh, it's also got like Cake Factory and uh, a couple other things. It's got the 
the frying pan game, the the A button that uh, is it the A button that uh, Mister Game and Watch has on Melee, where he flips the bacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's the cooking whatever it's called. I don't I don't remember the name of that one, but um, manhole. I remember playing. Um, I've got him here. If you want to, you want to hear him. How did I play that one? I don't remember how I played it, but I do remember playing manhole. It might have been on four as well, but. Um, the, the the one thing I, I always remember about like playing, I think I, I had a friend who had two or three and I, I played it. Uh, the one thing I like that really stands out about game and watch games is like, even as a kid, you're like, okay, these are simple and dumb and like, they're kind of easy, but they get harder. But you know, like you've run into that plenty of times. And then two hours later, you're like, I've just spent two hours playing this simple dumb easy game over and over and over and over again because right. they're fun they're just they're really fun in a dumb way but like you when when you get it and you're like like really like you know fire fire is like an example of like every time i restart a game of fire i'm like why am i doing this like it's gonna take 12 hours for this guy to jump out because it's so slow yeah why am i doing and then like Two minutes later, you're like, oh, I know why I'm doing it because it's fun. This game is great. Like, I, or all of, you know, not all the game and watch games are great, but, you know, a lot of them are really cool. Um, there's a couple on here that is, or no, there's only one on here that's uh, a two screened one. Correct. But, you know, that meant it was like in a clamshell DS style. But uh, I, I, I think. I think Octopus is my favorite Game & Watch game. Cake Factory is really good. I brought that up earlier, but I really love Octopus. Um, until I played Oil Panic, which, leading up to the show. Yes. That's really great. I think it might be one of the most interesting ones, because uh, especially when you play the modern version, where they add a second glass to collect right. the oil. It, it's, it's interesting because you can, like, there's, there's more going on. It's not just catch guy, catch guy, you know, you know, catch this thing, make sure you don't let this drop. And like you're actually trying to like, you know, collect something, dump it out, uh manage your I don't know, your inventory, which your inventory is six drops of oil. Yeah. But you have to like keep it managed, let make sure it doesn't overflow and um I had never played Oil Panic and I'm really into Oil Panic, so um nice. yeah, I, you know, I I you know they're they're weird, just like game and watch games. You don't think you're gonna enjoy them, and then you completely love them, or you know you find yourself just throwing your life away if you're not careful. Yeah, totally. Chill out, dude. We'll be right back. Wasn't humanly possible, but now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for head-to-head -head competition, use the revolutionary video link and blow your opponent away. Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power. What the heck was that, dude? Okay, so if you're watching... Uh... You know, like, you know, if you're just listening, sorry, if you're listening, you may not have known what, what, what was happening. Actually, actually you, I can, I can put the money down on this. You have no idea what just happened. Even if you're guessing, you have, you're me. not even close. Trust me. You have absolutely no idea what just transpired in that old classic commercial. Uh, that is an old Game Boy commercial we found. And, uh, we got to break it down, dude. Cause like, there's so much in this commercial okay, to right. talk about. So, I like when we decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna throw a commercial in there. I immediately was like, dude, it's gotta be this one. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, oh, I mean, like you could you could basically argue that RoboCop decided, well, some cross between RoboCop and Spawn decided to. Uh, they were bored and decided to birth a child into existence with a Game Boy so he could play against him. <laughs> Yeah. And he sh he shoots a laser across the room, and all of a sudden, a fully clothed, of course, it's the '90s, so right. fully clothed denim wearing child appears. I guess he's a teenager. Yeah, he's not a child. He's, no, he's not. He's a he he is a through teen. puberty teenage denim boy. Yes, uh, and uh, he also has a Game Boy, and through the power of their video link cable, 
<laughs> he is able to play Tetris against this life creating robot. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the the reason robots want to be able to create life is to play Tetris with, right? Right. Um also uh, he has an earbud port too so let's not oh about yeah that. and he has the robot has ears yeah he like plugs earbuds in and it's like <laughs> what the robot has ears that he needs earbuds dude it's okay this has the nintendo seal of quality so don't worry about it okay but uh yeah shoots a uh shoots a teenage boy into existence uh they plug in their headphones and they go to town on tetris together but uh, about 15 seconds into that, they decide to then plug in their video link cables. Right, right, right. Okay. We, we would just call these link cables as kids. Apparently, it was a video link cable. Yeah, I never According to the that. 90s voice that uh, was over top of this. Right, um, yes. Yeah, I... Uh, so so what happened dude so there's a robot that created a life form teenage 90s boy okay so 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 then they're playing and okay. apparently tetris makes robots want to pee because he's like shaking at some point like, right yeah it's kind of weird. weird but of course the 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 boy well actually we don't see who wins now that somebody, i think about it somebody we don't wins. we don't actually see who wins uh we just eventually see the boy shoot laser out of his finger that disintegrates the robot what in the exact same way that the the robot created the boy wow. the the creation destroyed the creator uh just to let you know what have we learned when you create something and and, and another life form that's sentient don't give them your power to create or destroy he did just, too good yeah yeah, I mean, well, that was his mandate, apparently, as a robot. Uh, this whole thing is just weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're going to have plenty more of these as the show goes along, but 90s advertising, man, um, I, I believe it favored the extreme over the... Uh, Modest? The sensible? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more of this great art that Nintendo has brought us. Indeed, indeed, sir. Basically, now we're going to kind of jump a little bit more deeply into the game. I use that phrase a lot. Um, starting off, we like to kind of go through each section. Uh, first thing we like to talk about is the story of the game. This game doesn't have a story. I mean, not really. Um, Sorry, no. So You know, there's a fire <laughs> or there's a bunch of potholes. Yeah. Uh, um, there's an octopus that has an endless supply of treasure, apparently, underneath him. True. That is a big chest. You know, there is no uh, button to say, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I got That's enough funny. treasure. Can I, can I, like, motorboat away, please? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the only story I could kind of piece together is there are some, like, re returning or re reoccurring characters. Uh, we mentioned there's lots of toads, Yoshis. Dunk and this Kong is in the, the, the modern right. remakes of them. Which also, I didn't know that... Uh, I don't know if it does this in other ones, but uh, I was really surprised when we started playing this one where the the modern versions change things. Like I oh, said, yeah. like Mario gets another glass and oil drop, or mm -hmm. um, uh, Octopus is really like the most interesting one because it's not a set state that he goes to. Yeah, you can kind of can move inch. anywhere, which yeah. both is like, you know, kind of freeing, but also like, I don't know where I'm standing. I don't know where this tentacle is going to be. I might, my hitbox might yeah. get taken. I, I almost feel safer in the old version where it's just like, no, I'm here. I know if I'm here, I'm not going to get killed totally. or grabbed or whatever that octopus does to you. I disagree with your statement, but we'll talk about that when we get to that part. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, not much story. It's not really a story thing. It's mini games. That's yeah. really what this is all about, and that's fine. It works fine. It doesn't need a story. Uh, you could probably come up with a story to intertwine these games, mm -hmm. but it's not really necessary. Um, so moving forward from that, we have the gameplay and levels. So like me and Brian have said uh, throughout this episode, basically... This game uh, contains a total of four mini games, and each mini game has two different versions. 
It has the classic and the modern versions. And those have two different versions. They have the easy and the hard version. Okay. Yes. And I don't even know if I was playing easy or hard when I was playing I think we were playing easy. Okay. It just defaults to that. Right. Okay. So, me personally, I, I would go into each one and I would try the classic first. And so... Like we mentioned, the classic ones are based around the originals, and so no Nintendo characters of any kind. They're the Mr. Game & Watch stick figure yeah. looking people. Strictly Mr. Gall. Yes, and so uh, a lot more simplistic, which I think is good, like I mentioned, you know, starting out to get the overall feel of the game to just, you know, try it out on, um, you know, the way it was originally designed. And then going in and, because like you mentioned, some of them, they've changed things or made things better. So, um, the four games that we have are Manhole, Fire, Octopus, and Oil Panic. And uh, I can try to explain a little bit of what each one is. Uh, starting off is Manhole, and you control, in classic mode, you control a dude. And basically, he's trying to hold these... Uh, he has he has one manhole. I guess it is the manhole holes. and four holes, and so and people are, are people people are running over them, and you have to move your guy around to keep them from falling in. And it's a two tiered, um, yeah. walkway of sorts with each you know there's a hole on either side of the guy on both tiers. So correct when someone walks across one, they're going to walk across the other that's on their path. So you have to make sure that you're watching people below you and above you and know that when one guy walks past one of them, you're eventually going to have to save, try and save him again. Yes. So you get to try and try and manage them. And it's, it's never like more than you can handle because that would be unfair. Right. But it still gets ridiculously hard. And that's the frustrating thing is most of these games, I tend to believe that they wouldn't give you an impossible right. you know, thing you couldn't get through. So everything that you're faced with is possible but the fact that I sometimes mess them up, it's like frustrating because I know it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the classic version of this is pretty simple. Uh, I believe you are allowed multiple misses, maybe three or something. It's always three. Okay, three. You always have three lives and not like not like three lives. And then like if you have zero lives, you you keep going. You, you It's just you have three chances. Right. And so each game... Uh, also calculates your score. So I think every person that walks over a manhole successfully, yes. you get some points for. And so it's all about getting your score up the highest. Uh, one thing worth noting, if you play this on a Game Boy Color or Advance or SP, um, it does color the game. So yes. the original is just black and white with the olive green, whatever. Um, but in the colored version, the watery, fluidy substance underneath is a bit brown, I noticed. Oh, is it? And so other people, including myself, believe that that brown, liquidy goodness below is feces. <laughs> okay. And so uh, you're basically trying to keep these... They kind of look like children in, in the uh, classic version. You're trying to keep these children from falling into feces. <laughs> We're falling into some dukes. Some dukes. So, so, so I, I'm wondering if, um, so this game came out before the Game Boy Color came out. Now, it's, there's every possibility that, uh, with the relationship that Nintendo and Tose had, that they were like, "Hey, this is gonna come out in a year. Uh, put this chip in your game and put whatever color you want on it." And I honestly it don't know out, how that works, but I'm, I know that every Game Boy game. Will, does some kind of color right it does but like there are if you hold down uh the a or the b button and press a direction when you're booting it up you, you can, can change. change the color palette you right. can even do like a, a negative <sighs> that was my palette. favorite i, I loved yeah, the that ne- was so weird pokemon and negative was always so cool dude. I, I always played every game in negative for a little <laughs> while just to see what it looked like yeah but um i'm i'm more wondering if there was a way that the game boy color could read the color palette that they designed made, with that they designed with for the Super Game Boy because as we said this game uh, has Super yeah. Game Boy compatibility so that that was that just kind of led to like a brain fart where i'm just like wait a minute maybe that that's how it has color that mm. is appropriate or something Interesting. Or, or sponsored by the developer if you want to put it that yeah, way yeah yeah could be 
All right, so uh, continuing on, the modern version of this, you play as Yoshi, and uh, there aren't really sewers in this. It's more of these platforms with water or something underneath, and you have these little platforms that basically characters walk over. Yeah. People like Toad, Donkey Kong Jr., Mario, and so you use Yoshi's tongue to pull these platforms back which up. I, which I thought was a great... Uh... Use. touch the use of his yes use mm. of the the tongue ability yes but it is a little weird though right you're, you're pulling platforms up and they fall right. after someone walks on it so you don't have to keep it there you can pull a platform up walk mm. away from it and it has one jump worth of weight on it before right. it falls down so, so I it think is this, different this is this is um like i said i don't think i've ever played game and watch gallery one I don't know if the rest. Maybe I'm just completely misremembering uh, the way four say. or the other one. The I know I played like two of them, but um, they've added features to the, totally. cl- the the modern versions of these games. Totally, which oh, I yeah. I did not. Re- I don't remember that being a thing. Maybe it was. Yeah, I think they just tried to make them a little bit better. Maybe. Um, so that's helpful that you are given a little bit extra, so you can set a platform, let somebody walk on it. But as soon as they're done, if there's somebody behind them, you got to hurry up and yeah. put that platform back up. So I don't want to spend too much more time talking about these because people might get bored listening to the game <laughs> and watch the game. So we'll move on. Uh, the next one is Fire, as we mentioned earlier. And so the uh, origi- Fire is a classic. You yeah, probably played it. Everybody has played it or seen it to some degree because it's really well known. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the classic version, you uh, there's a... Not much changes. Oh, uh, I mean the setting a little bit. I mean the setting, yeah, the setting and the characters change, but you're basically you have three um places it, that you could be standing in. Right. And in the classic it's like a skyscraper apartment building. Yeah. And it's on fire and people jump out of the building. You are the emergency responders, firemen, firemen you know, whatever. And you the, have, as the cliche goes. Right. And you have a trampoline of sorts. That you are bouncing people to the uh, the emergency mm-hmm. uh, squad thing to yeah, take you, them they away. Jump out of the the they jump out of their building and land in the top of a ambulance. Top, I guess yes, the top of the ambulance and just keep piling up until you <laughs> run out alive. So <laughs> until you let three people fall to their doom. Yeah, and so you're just bouncing them, and then eventually multiple people are coming out. They can fall at different speeds, so you gotta like jump back and forth. Um, do classic. they fall at different speeds? Yeah, so some are quicker than others. They do. Is this modern version or a uh, classic version? Because I, I feel like they all fall at the same speed. Maybe in the in classic, classic version. Maybe in the classic. Because because in Manhole, you you were saying that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. In Manhole, you were saying that uh, uh, the characters walk at different speeds, and that was new to me. I didn't know that, but uh, I feel like like most of the skill involved in fire is like knowing exactly which one's about to drop three tenths of a second before the other one because you've been watching it the whole time. So it's hard to say because they like judder. But but yeah, but, right. But. So it's really classic, but I love it. And yeah. so in the modern version, um, you play as Mario and Luigi, the Mario Bros, as they are known, and the castle is on fire or a castle. I'm not mm-hmm. sure which castle. We're, we're assuming it's. Peach's castle. Right. She was baking a cake. Or Princess Toadstool at this point. Yes. And she was No, baking... no, no. 97. Never mind. Uh-huh. Sorry. It's after Mario 64. So she's. Right. So this is post she's, Mario. 64. She's Peach. This is this canon. Yeah. Um, and so people are jumping out of the castle and you are trying to bounce them to a mushroom looking carriage. Yeah. To carriage them away. Seriously, how, how many Donkey Kong Juniors? exist (laughs) they all keep jumping out yeah that's not canon um (laughs) so yeah it's it's pretty similar there's not a whole lot that's changed there is one thing i'll talk about in a minute i noticed at one point i was playing it there's a star that comes out of a yoshi egg yeah and i got it to the carriage and it didn't do anything so i I don't know if maybe it takes away like a miss or like a health thing, if you, maybe. But how would you get it? Oh, you you would have to just, just be get it to the carriage. Yeah, and just it just has to be. Or paying maybe you have to miss it. I don't know. It didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Um. But there's also bombs, bomb up, bomb bombs. Okay. Yeah, that's a thing. That's that's, new. that's the change. Okay. And so if you, <laughs> I didn't know this. If you let it go to the mushroom carriage, 
it blows up all of the people that you just rescued and you lose. <laughs> like like automatically lose? Yeah, game over. Boom. Like, like you got three lives and you drop a bomb. I don't know. Okay. Because I might have okay. already had two. I don't know. Maybe it's just a hurt. But yeah. Um. So that kind of made me mad because like, what? I just, I'm moving everything over, you know? <laughs> I'm not thinking about it. Right. So maybe that's the big change on this one. Uh, Looking at some footage here, uh, there is one point where like a Yoshi comes out and he bounces and he just doesn't have a lot of bounce. It's a real small bounce. Okay. And there's like toads going way, way higher. So this one, they definitely took advantage of either speed or just less bounce. Mm-hmm. And so it's a lot easier to juggle and you just really got to pay attention. Um, but that's my favorite. So okay. let's uh, keep moving. Next up is octopus. Oh, I love octopus. I'm very aware of the octopus because of Smash Bros. I believe he's so that's that's a final smash at some point, right? He's game and watches, I think. Well, well, of course, but right. he like is that a brawl final smash? I assume. No, uh, he wasn't in brawl. He was in Wii U. Wasn't so it was a Wii U final smash. Smash Four. I I don't know. I always turn final smash off. Sorry. I love final smash. I hate final smash. But yes, he comes down and he just, just ruins the, just, the flow yeah. of the game. So I had never played this game, but I'm very aware of it. Okay, yeah. And so going in, you're like, I love this one. I love Octopus. Yes. And so I was like, oh, well, I'm sure it's going to be really good. So I went into Classic, and I was <laughs> like... <laughs> here, here comes the beef. <laughs> it was so stupid, dude. I was like, I died like immediately, like multiple times. And I'm like, all right, I just need to figure out what is going on here. Uh, cause there's this octopus and it just magically would grow tentacles in different areas. I'm like, I don't even know what's happening. And you're like, well, you got to get to the bottom, grab the treasure. You can grab as much as you want. And then you go back up the rope to the, to the ship, to the boat. I'm like, all right. And, and I you literally back. cannot go up to the boat unless you have treasure. It won't let you. Once you drop in the water, you're stuck in the water until you've got some treasure. Okay. So I died. I came over like twice within like a minute and i was like this is dumb so i handed it to you and i'm like show me Mm -hmm. and then you freaking beasted the game you're like oh yeah i'm just gonna go one life for five minutes no 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 and so Uh, i'm also pretty sure that if you are uh the 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 far bottom left corner of the screen where you're not hanging onto the rope but you're not you know you haven't ventured out from below the rope that is the one place in the water where the octopus cannot get you i'm pretty sure that's a thing i uh, I was under the impression that in classic mode, there is no safe place, but you might be right. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Uh, as far as the rope is concerned, his tentacle will branch from there right, in two places on the rope, but then the other three tentacles, uh, it, you know, they, they will reach fix. The, those are the only three places you can stand right. if you leave that corner. Um, so I was telling you though it, it it it's a little bit easier when you're playing like right on a game and watch because you can kind of see the the spots where everything you know, you know especially if you tilt it more yeah um, this, as was the case with all those kind of tiger games you can see every available position yes uh, I feel like there's a uh, there's a story I know from uh, Stephen L Kent's The Ultimate History of Video Games about like having to not like cut everything out of there. But like the process of making a uh, a finalized, I don't know, not blueprint, but like here is the final version of the game, and they had to like make every single one of those holes so that they could, you know, produce all of them. But yeah, like having all those little holes was like a chore. Yeah. But you you had to do them if you wanted to make a new game and watch game. That's crazy. Yeah, so I feel like that kind of puts you at a disadvantage. It's true. I don't know where these tentacles go, so it just takes playing it for a little while Mm -hmm. to figure it out. You got to measure how many, because, you know, they they clearly denote the segments on the the Game Boy version. Right. To let you know, like, you know, but you you won't know if it's full or not unless you kind of, you know, dicked around with the game for a few minutes and started to count the the amount of tentacles or the, the amount of joints or whatever that are on the tentacle. Yes. Um, so, but, but I do I do love me some octopus. It, it's a great game. I was having more fun with it as I was figuring it out, especially the uh, modern version. I, I I liked it a lot more mm-hmm. than the classic. Uh, in that one, you play as Mario, and uh, Peach is on the boat, and you go down, and you get She's little, money hungry as usual, yeah, she's apparently. Like, Give me some money, Mario. Yeah. Dang it. Jeez. Maybe. And you can just keep stuffing that bag. As long as you can stand in that spot, you can just keep yep. shoving more. You know, One point every time you put something <laughs> in there. So and Mario, then back out. Yeah. And so Mario goes down. He gets a little scoop outfit. Goes down, grabs a bunch of treasure, comes back up. 
unloads it and keeps going. And so eventually the squid uh, octopus, excuse me, will catch you and he will squeeze the life out of you. Out yeah. Of, out uh, of Mario. Uh, I really like that. Um, it's not so much an animation in the original on the Game & Watch because they're not really animations. That's kind of the whole magic of the thing. But uh, I, I do really love that there is a special thing for when you get caught that you're just stuck in like the the knot of <laughs> of uh, tentacles. Yes. So. Also, this is the most times I've said the word tentacles in like in three minutes in my entire life. So, congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. I get I get a prize, right? You do. Finally, is it, is it a job at Tose? Is that a sushi place? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm just assuming. <laughs> um, finally, is as we mentioned earlier, oil or uh, oil panic? I guess yes. It, oil panic. Is the official term. By new favorite game and watch game. Yes. And so, like Brian mentioned, this is a two screen one. Uh, so when you play on the Game Boy, they just kind of mush the two screens together. Uh, they gave a lot of real estate to the bottom screen and not yes, so much they the did. top one. That was weird. I wonder if that's how they actually were made, though, where the bottom screen was bigger than the top one. I know that in the one dual screen clamshell one I played, it, it was the two screens were the same size. So I'm not sure, but you know. Yeah. It could just be like they wanted to, you know, that was, I don't, I actually don't know. I'm I'm not going to, you know, offer conjecture. I'm just going to say I don't know. Okay. Well, in this one, you work at a, uh, in the classic mode, excuse me, you work at a gas station. It, it actually says gas. And it's a three-story gas station, as those were popular, you know, back then. Um, and one of them is the roof, right? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. There right. really is okay. three. Okay. Because uh, there's cars parked down below with, with patrons waiting for uh, oil to be filled in their cars. Okay. There's a uh, station attendant working the second floor. Right. And then there's you on the top floor uh, collecting. Oh, okay. Okay. Collecting oil dripping from the ceiling, as it is stated here. For whatever reason. Uh, for some reason, the oil is coming. They've figured out how to get oil to cr- create itself from the ceiling. <laughs> And so you, the character, are catching this oil in a bucket. And so in the classic, you can uh, catch up to three, yes. three oil drops before it will overflow. Right. And it, it shows you. You can see. And then uh, you have to basically like, hang your head out the window mm-hmm. and throw the oil down to the non-controllable attendant below who Who is just walking back and forth hoping that you'll show up i have a lot of words for that man um he does make me mad sometimes but yes okay and so you throw the oil down to him and then you're basically off the hook at that point right but while you're doing that you there is more droplets coming off the ceiling so you have to be quick uh, to catch more and you have to hit an additional button press to throw it out the window. Right. Doesn't really mean much if you're just listening, but if you're playing it, you understand that you got to hit the over button one more you, time. You, you step, you press the button to step out of the doorway or the window, and then press it again to to drop it. Right. So it's it's a fun little game. It, like you mentioned, it's a little more simplistic with one bucket. Right. Once we get into the modern version, uh, they, they did upgrade it a bit. So, moving over to that, we are now in a castle thing. It's one of those, like, end of Mario level castles. Yeah, right. I don't know whose castles those are. I don't either, I guess, now that I think about it. I, and I then, as you get further assume... in the Mario games, they get bigger for some reason. Right. I don't... Whose are those? I need to figure out who the, who's those are. Maybe Bowser is? Okay, so basically how it works then is once you start, you are Mario at the top of said castle, and you are collecting drops of, <laughs> once again, oil, and the you have now two, I assume they're still buckets, uh, two containers to catch the oil in. So you have a left and right hand, and then if you press, it's either A or B, it might be both, you press a button, you're, you kind of flip sides. So you can you can be facing uh, toward the camera as Mario or away from the camera. And then you hang your head out the window and you're in a castle, uh, as I mentioned, and Yoshi is below you. And so you drop the oil down to Yoshi, which then allows Yoshi to, I guess, breathe fire. 
I'm not entirely sure how that makes sense, but it, it it is a thing regardless. And so if you miss Yoshi, there are other things waiting below him that the oil will fall on. Um, you one... think after they uh, got oil spit on them or dropped on them after one time, they would stop standing there. But they don't. They, they, they don't. continue. Um, like Donkey Kong Jr. is one, and then uh, Luigi's the other. That's okay, what it is. is that what it is? And so uh, if you miss him, I think you have lives. Um, and then at the top of the castle is this really cool browser, browser, Bowser sprite. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned something you read. We read about how it can somehow affect Bowser. There's some, there's some way that you can use the oil you've collected to... I don't want to say impede him, but but to interact with him in such a way that you get more points. Right. I don't know how it works. Um, we couldn't figure it out. Yeah, no, but so probably something really dumb and easy, but no, yeah, whatever. I don't know. And so the, I don't know. I just really like this level. I like the bottom screen on this one. The sprite for Bowser looks really cool. He's like kind of, he's bigger than everybody else, but he just kind of looks pudgy and all all scrunched up right exactly because they're totally trying to fit him on the screen and he just looks really cool um and i also like that when you're moving mario around on the top screen you can see his head kind of peeking out on the Mm -hmm. bottom screen yeah and uh i just thought that was also you can also flip him you know right i mentioned that so so yeah 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 and that uh that adds like a whole nother level that right original because while you're have. throwing oil out to yoshi you're you might be catching oil right. with your other hand right and so it, it, it gets really complex pretty quick and, and so i don't think it's fair to say that uh this is my favorite game and watch game because this is the modern one with extra stuff in it so right i uh, you know maybe maybe octopus really still is my favorite one but uh this Oh, I was having a lot of fun with Oil Panic. Totally. Uh, the, the modern version. And it, it definitely gets more complex. It's all about portion control. You got to keep an eye on how much oil you have in each thing so that you're dumping it out onto Yoshi when he's there and not letting your buckets overflow and right. not having them switched the wrong way. So right. it's a good one. There's quite a bit of depth to it. Probably the deepest game out of them all. Uh, a lot going on. A lot you got to keep, excuse me, keep your eye on. So pretty cool. Yeah. So that is the four games. Sorry if that felt long, but hopefully if you're watching the YouTube version, you can I mean, can it's four least... games, man. We, we covered them pretty quick. Yeah, I think. and you're getting a lot for your money. I mean, there's quite a bit there. Um, so now's the time of the show where we talk about the visuals, audio of that game. Um, honestly, the, the way I played it on an SP looked really good. The added color was nice. It, it, it didn't, like make everything look super beautiful but it helped a little bit added some greens some reds and some browns yeah and so uh the original um the classic version is just whatever it's good it's fine it works but the the modern versions are where it's at Mm -hmm. uh them throwing mario characters in really just adds a extra amount of charm there's something about bouncing a little toad across into a little uh, mushroom, you know, carriage that just it, there's just something about it gives it a lot of extra mm-hmm. warmth and feeling. So uh, the sprites are really cool. They're not super connected to any other sprites from other Game Boy games, that I, as far as I can tell. They're kind of unique. And yeah, they are and, until uh, like Yoshi's Island DS happens, which I feel like these sprites are basically like the Donkey Kong Jr. sprite is that little small ball of donkey kong jr yeah is exactly what i think of when i think of uh yoshi's island ds okay i could see that so yeah so a lot of charm good uh good attention to detail on it i could go more in depth with it but honestly i just i I just think it's good Mm -hmm. um there's it's not really what it's about with this game visually it's more about you know the gameplay itself and uh all that so that's good the music I don't really remember the music. Uh, I mean, the original Game & Watches didn't have music. Right. Um, if they, they probably put some in here. But I, my, uh, my memories of playing Game & Watch games are always like this silent suspense where I'm just like, I'm in it. I'm listening to the sounds that the game itself is making. Because a lot of times you need that sound. 
especially if you're doing something like when you're like late in fire, like late in the game and you you're up to like 700 or something like things are moving quickly and you need to make sure that uh you kind of the sound helps you see which one is falling faster or which one is first and yeah. you're kind of paying attention to that. So you you really kind of want to hear what the game is telling you back. Um that's always what I think of when I think of a game and watch game. It's just this kind of silence. Yeah. With the game sounds itself. So, yeah. I mean, you know, music, music is good. I love music, but, you know, that's not the Doesn't first thing really that pops it. to mind when I think of a game and watch game. Totally. And so I think the modern versions have it, but it's not like they're playing familiar tracks from other Mario games. Right, right. So, um, nothing over the top extraordinary, but once again, it doesn't really need that to create the experience. So, with that said, uh, that's kind of it with this game. Uh, I guess final thoughts for me. Uh, it's a cool game. It's fun to play through those games. There's some unlockables that you can get for getting high scores on things. So, there's a little bit of extra motivation to do well in them. Uh, if I was a kid and this was one of the only games I had, I could see myself playing it a lot. Trying to beat high scores, beat my siblings' high scores. That's kind of what it's all about. And uh, just kind of mastering it or finding yourself in the zone. When you're casually playing through these, like nowadays as an adult, you might play through each one a little bit and then kind of move on to the next one. It, it doesn't really, you don't really see the greatness in it until you spend like an hour with, with one version of one game. And I, I didn't really do that this time around, you know, reviewing it. I just kind of played through them all and gave them a little bit of time for each one. So I think they really shine once you focus on them. But it's a good collection. There are four great games, and the more you play them, you, you kind of find more depth in them. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a great little collection, and they obviously kept making them. So this one was definitely, I think, a, a home run for them. So it was, it was good, good all around. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The, the more you play them, the more they do shine. Um, they're, they're just like you kind of start to get it. Uh, they're a lot more fun. I, I feel like in, in, a, in a house with uh, siblings that this is one of those games where you can go, like as a parent, you can go, all right, you all get this one copy. Um, you know, beat the high score. Beat, you know, keep... It's one of those kind of things like we had like a old handheld Yahtzee that made its way to every member of the family and like, you know, oh, I beat the high score and then goes back in the drawer until someone else needs it. It, it. it feels like one of those kind of games where like your brother will be playing it for like a week straight, just trying to stomp on every record that your sister made. And then like, oh, crap, he did. That. Oh, I could beat that. And like, then you borrow it for a week and then someone else plays it for a week. Like they're. They're simple games, but they're just endlessly entertaining, and it kind of speaks to just the fact that Nintendo knows how to make a fun little thing. They've always been able to do that. So, um, I uh, every time I I sit down with a, a game and watch game, I'm like, yeah, I'll play this for like a minute, and then there goes an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they're they're fun. I like them. Awesome. And now it's time for this week's song of the week. Dude, this is track two, which I think it has an, an official name, but I didn't write it down, uh, from Batman Return of the Joker. Nice. I think it's like a sewer or something. Um, but yeah, it, I don't It sounds sewer -y. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of got a sewer yeah. vibe to it. Yeah. Um, Dude, I was jamming over here. That was really right? good. It, I like that a lot. Once that... The first part's kind of okay, but then when it gets to that like gangster beat, like... Doom, bah, doom, doom, bah, I'm like, oh yeah, this thing kind of grooves, mm. and so this thing hustles um, and/or flows. That's right, as as they say. Um, so yeah, that that's your track of the week. It was just a random one that I came across, and I was like, oh, this is this is a cool little song. I like it. Um, maybe one day we'll cover this game. Uh, who made Who made a uh, Return of the Joker? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, like doesn't matter. The studio doesn't matter. No, <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, I don't know. I wanted to see if like any sort of feels I had about like, oh, that song sounds like something. 
but I don't care. I want to say it was like Konami. Um, I don't. I don't think Sun, Sunsoft made the uh, the NES one that everybody loves, but yeah, I have no idea. So uh, did, publisher Sunsoft. It was it Sunsoft. Like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Assuming they made the Game Boy one as well. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure. But one day we will cover that because, like I said, I love Batman and uh, it's a good tune. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a good little, uh, good little uh, song of the week. So Indeed. Look forward to more of those in the future. I agree. All right. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode. Uh, if you want, you can find more of our episodes on the NintendoVillage.com, and we are also on the Nintendo Village YouTube as well as iTunes. So join us next time for more Strictly Game Boy. See you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and visit the NintendoVillage.com, your home for everything Nintendo.